Hello everyone. It's been a little while since I uploaded a video, but I wanted to upload a video today. Um, this is a series that I think I'm going to make a weekly fixture on my channel and you can look at it on my blog too. But I wanted to make a series about being an artist, things that I'm thinking about right now, things that I'm kind of feeling, and I wanted to connect that into tarot. Because I love tarot, I have eight different decks, tarot and oracle decks or spirit decks, whatever you want to call them. I have several, and I just thought I would pull a card. I usually pull a card every day just to think about something, but I was thinking what I would do is every Tuesday, I would pull a card and then just give us some things to think about, some things to consider as we're working on our art or whatever you're really working on. It can apply to anything. It doesn't have to just be artistic. For me, I'm an artist, so usually the way that I look at tarot informs something about my work or what I'm creating, how I'm sharing it, how I feel about it, stuff like that. So if you've never worked with tarot cards before. There's so many resources online. I'll put some in the description box um, and I'll also put links to the few of the decks that I have that I like. Um, I'm no means an expert on tarot. I still have a lot to learn, uh, but the way that I like to use it is just kind of pull a card and it gives me some things to think about. And it gives me some guiding questions or um, considerations to think about for the day or the week or the month or whatever I want. So um, I wanted to share the card I pulled with you today. So I used this deck. This is one of my favorite decks. It's actually the first tarot deck that I got. Actually, well that's not true. The first tarot deck that I got was when I was in high school, but I get in trouble for it by my school. So I got rid of it, I think. But this was the first tarot card deck that I actually had and it was gifted to me by my friends for my birthday a few years ago and apparently this tarot deck is really rare. I had my tarot cards read by a reader this weekend. Um, she used oracle cards which were really cool. Um, but this deck is really rare. I told her that I had this one and she was kind of jealous of it. So it's illustrated by Salvador Dali. It comes in this really nice box and then in the box it comes with a book that gives you all the meanings of the cards and it's cool it's in English, German, and I think French. So yeah very interesting translation but it has all of the meanings in here of all the cards and then underneath the book is where the cards live so they're all Salvador Dali illustrations they're really really different he uses a lot of symbolism in his art and the tarot cards are really no different. Um, they're beautifully illustrated so I really like them. And I decided to pull a card from that deck today and the card that I pulled was the moon. This is a major arcana card. It's card 18 of the major arcana. This is a really beautiful card. In this version, we see the moon here, and it's looking down over the city, and there's this wolf howling at the moon in the city. There's this lobster, which is a theme of Dolly's work a lot, the little lobster. And there's complementary colors. There's the bright warm reds and oranges and then the dark blues and black. So it's a lovely card. And what this card is about, as I've researched and looked through the, the uh, information that's available about this card, this is about examining your shadow sides. This is about um, letting yourself be in all of the phases that you are. Let me read you guys just the short excerpt from the book. It says, 
Accept your intense emotions as a reality that wants to be lived, just like any other aspect of your being. Then you may safely swim about in the depth, the deep waters of your psyche. Be at peace with yourself and the world. Open up your heart and cease to be self-absorbed. So, what is that meaning for me personally this week? And maybe you can apply some of these feelings to your work or your life or whatever you're doing. For me examining the shadow side of myself and dealing with my negative emotions really because intense emotions you know it's easy to feel intensely joyful or I mean not maybe easy for everybody but um when you feel intensely joyful or intensely happy or intensely confident you feel pretty good um, versus when you're feeling like intensely sad or intensely envious or intensely angry, those things are harder to deal with. So for me, it means not necessarily, so a lot of what you read um, or research like about negative emotions or versus positive ones, it's very much like, oh, when you experience a negative emotion, you know, try as hard as you can to flip it into a positive emotion. Um, think of something else that's positive, like acknowledge the negative emotion, but as soon as you've acknowledged it, try to kind of flip your thinking into something more positive. And I think this works when it's something that you've practiced all the time. And you have to already be like cognizant of your negative emotions and pretty self-aware to even be able to do it like at all, let alone to make it a mental habit that no matter what you think or whenever you think a negative emotion you're just gonna like snap right out of it and think of a positive thought right so my hair is doing something weird over there okay <laughs> fixed it so anyway so what this means for me is that when I experience a negative emotion and I think the most common negative emotion for me is probably envy, jealousy, um, feeling like I'm not good enough or feeling like other people have attention or things that I want and that I can't, I'm not getting them as quickly as I want, I'm not getting the recognition that I want. Um, I also end up getting caught up in a lot of fear about the future. Um, you know, I'm going into the profession of teaching, which I'm very excited about, but there's a lot of uh, strong opinions about teaching from other people. Um, and there's a lot of strong um, opinions about art teaching in general. So it's kind of hard at times not to get like caught up and like always having to be like a strength, you know, like strength coming from within and just being like, oh, well, other people's opinions aren't, they don't define me, they're not important to me. It's like that. Um, my strength in that area like can get worn down a lot from having to do it so much. So those are the kind of emotions that I feel like I'm dealing with the most often when it comes to like intense negative emotions. So thinking about this in terms of the moon, right? The moon isn't always showing her face to us in the bright side. She also shows the shadow side half the time. Like even when she's showing part of the bright side, the shadow side's still there. So, like, the moon is not ashamed of her shadow side or negative side. So, maybe I shouldn't really be either, and I need to detach from it, detach from the, uh, detach from the attachment to the negative feelings, um, being something that is saying something about what's happening in reality. So I can't remember where I saw this interview, but it was an interview with the rapper KRS One. And he was talking about the government, but he was talking about like this metaphor of when you go to McDonald's and you complain that you want to speak to the manager, but really you have to get to the manager of the manager of the manager to actually find out the true story. To get to the truth, you can't just go through the next level up. You have to go to that person's boss and then the next person's boss and the next person's boss and then finally somewhere you'll reach the top. 
and you'll reach the truth, right? This is in regards to, like, the government and, like, New World Order and all that. But you can apply it to your mental, your mental health, right? Or just how you approach life, how you approach problems that arise. So when I feel like somebody has said something to me that makes me feel bad, or I look at something that makes me feel inadequate, or I experience somebody that talks negatively about the future, I need to step away from it being about that person, right? Because it's never about that person. It's always about us. All roads lead back to us. Wherever you go, there you are, right? Like, you're always there with yourself. So, it's not really about that person. It's about you in some way. There's some part of you that that person is triggering to feel bad. So, like, for me, sometimes on Instagram... I'll see people getting like thousands and thousands and thousands of likes for their art and like selling art all the time on Instagram and like I haven't really had that much success in that area and I think that's because external validation is important to me and some you know like culturally like external validation is important and uh, monetary success is important in our culture so it's not about the picture, it's about a society that I've grown up in and values that I've acquired from that society that I need to like reconcile in order to move forward. And like it's not something that you're just going to acknowledge once and be like, okay, like conquered that feeling and I'll never feel it again. I think it's always just going to be an ongoing thing. Um, but if we're thinking about the moon and thinking about taking all phases of ourselves as just as good as the other, right? Because we don't look at the moon and say, oh, it's a crescent moon tonight. That's a shit moon. And I prefer the, you know, three quarter moon, right? Like we don't say that. We say like, look at the moon. It's beautiful no matter what kind of moon it is. And maybe that's some kind of self-love metaphor that you can apply to yourself um, in times that you're not feeling so good or like something happens. Um, and I think just always remembering that all, like all roads lead back to you. All roads lead back to yourself. So, you know, of course, if other people are consistently shitty, then you should probably definitely try to minimize your contact with them. But... There's something coming up within you that's like the speed bump that you need to get over, that you need to acknowledge, that you need to like take a step back, take a deep breath, maybe, you know, meditate, whatever you want. And then you can conquer those feelings. You can, uh, you acknowledge it, you live through it, and you don't just like blindly say like, okay, I'm thinking a bad thought, I need to think a good thought without acknowledging and really thinking like, where's the bad thought even coming from? Where is it starting from? You know, how, like this issue is coming up for me many, many times again. What is it? What is the source of that issue? So I think like being more self-aware. This really taps into, I found this cool um, questionnaire on Pinterest. It's like 30 questions to become more self-aware. And I think that's cool. I think it's cool. Like so many times there's like journaling prompts that are all about like, what are my best qualities? Like, what are my strengths? What are, you know, what are my best accomplishments, right? But there's not a lot out there that are like, how do I react to things when I don't get what I want? You know, that's like a very interesting question. That was a question that I journaled on today. So, you know, maybe just doing a deep dive into those like more negative aspects of yourself. Like not even negative, but just like, you know, we all have a shadow side to ourselves that manifests itself in different ways and is triggered by different things and comes out at different times. So I definitely think it's important to just explore it, like play with it. It's not, it's not negative. It's not, I shouldn't use that word. It's not a bad thing. It's like your shadow side. It's, um, 
parts of you that have you know, like just like how the good parts of you have been influenced by the world around you and people around you and significant figures in your life and significant life events that you've had the um, shadow side of you has as well so um, the more that you can you know acknowledge it and acknowledge your um, that negative those negative feelings when they do come up and just kind of facing them head on and just saying like huh like I'm not gonna judge myself for this I'm just gonna kind of like take a step back try to figure it out and then I'll you know see what I can do with it see how I can change it see how I can embrace it see how maybe I can you know say like these things aren't for me these things bother me this person says things to me that I don't really appreciate um, and I can't be around them until I figure out how to build up a strength towards that or maybe I can't be around them ever again at all but anyway <laughs> this video is supposed to be like five minutes and it's 16 minutes um, so I'm going to start doing this on Tuesdays, Tarot Tuesday. Uh, the card from the Salvador Dali deck today was the moon. Let's think about embracing our shadow sides, letting our shadow sides even show a little bit, like talking about them, talking about ways in which we need to uh, maybe improve upon ourselves or um, ways that we have... Uh, ways to go, ways that we need to like work on things, right? Um, because it, it is a practice of like, okay, if I react negatively and get upset and quit every time I don't get what I want, like that's something in my personality that I probably want to overcome, right? So how can you befriend your shadow side? So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let me know in the comments if you are working with the shadow side of yourself lately. What does the moon card mean to you? Maybe what your favorite tarot deck is. And I'll talk to you next Tuesday.